lineups for the Schaumburg Boomers. Chase Dawson, the center fielder, getting ready to lead it off right now. Alec Craig behind him, followed by Quincy Naporti. Braxton Davidson, Clint Hardy, Matt Botcher, Angelo Gums, Nick Odo, and Matt McGarry. Dawson, Craig, Naporti do up in this first inning against Yoniker Villalobos, the left-handed pitcher. About ready for play here on this Saturday night in Florence, Kentucky. First pitch in there for a strike, and we are underway. First pitch at 7.04 local time. 88 degrees and partly cloudy. This one in the air, shallow center field. Connor Crane over towards left center field now, and he will drift and make the play. One up, one down. Good start for Yoniker. Two pitches, two strikes, and one out. For a ball hit pretty much right off the center of the bat, that tailed significantly towards left field. Had some slice to it. I think that would typically be a left fielder's ball, but the way it came off the bat originally, it was out towards center and just continued to drift. There's no wind. Flag is relatively still, maybe a slight breeze every now and then, but really no wind. That ball just tailing away from Crane, and he called Sedio off to make the catch. Alec Craig steps in now, playing third base today. Swings at the first pitch, ground ball. Andres Rios, and that's out number two. Quickly, the defensive alignment for the Florence Yalls. In left field, it's Chad Sedio. Center field, you saw Connor Crane make a play. Harrison to Nickel in his usual spot of late in right field. Third base, it's Taylor Bryant. Luis Pintor at short. Andres Rios, the second baseman. Jordan Brower, a home run yesterday, has an RBI in each game in this 2021 Frontier League Division Series so far through three. He's at first base with Ronnie Allen Jr. doing the catching for Yonaiker Villalobos. Quincy Naporti steps in a home run for him yesterday as well. First pitch to him, a strike. Have to like what you're seeing so far from Villalobos. Naporti the MVP of the 2021 Frontier League regular season watches the ball. The first one out of the zone on the day delivered by Villalobos. But the MVP playing much better than an MVP in this series. 636 batting average with 10 total bases. This one driven high, deep to left center field. This one drifting, and that one's going to go off the base of the wall. Sedio hits off his hand. Naporti into second. A two-out double for the MVP and add two more total bases. That's his third extra base hit of the series, an eighth hit overall. He's had a really, really good series. He's been a tough out. There are a couple matchups that I'm interested to see Villalobos work against, Naporti being one of them. The benefit of the lefty-lefty matchup against Davidson here. So I, I'm interested to see that more on the Villalobos side. On the hitter side, I'm interested to see Naporti. I'm interested to see Matt Botcher. And I'm interested to see Angelo Gums because Gums struggles against lefties but has eaten up Florence and Botcher since entering into the lineup has been really, really solid. Braxton Davidson calls time. He's hitting 333 on this series, including a double and one RBI. Also has walked once. Big shift on him. Three infielders on the right of second base. Left on left situation, first time the Yalls have brought in a lefty to start a ball game. In there, just missed. The only other lefty to appear was Carl Craigie for a big two innings in game two to get the win. Fastball change up slider for Villa Lobos. Slider's been a work in progress over the course of the season, but has really added to his three pitch mix. Work the fastball inside, off speed pitches away. Looks at the runner in a porty, the 1-0 pitch outside for a ball. It's 2-0. Umpires for you today. Just a rotation from last night behind the plate. Jeffrey Spisak down third, Jim Shalley, and Mike Fichter down the first baseline. Schaumburg managed by Jamie Bennett. He's the third base coach. 2-0 pitch to Braxton Davidson. A dangerous count here with the runner in scoring position and two out. Swing and a miss. Good breaking ball. It's 2-1. Crowd getting into it a little bit. Not as much, not as well attended ball game as yesterday, but yesterday fans filled in as the game went on. Attendance in the 2400 range. 2 1 count to the four hole hitter of Schaumburg. 
Outside corner gets a strike. Nice job to fill the zone since then. So 2-2 count, runner on second base with two outs, top of the first inning. Villalobos trying to get out of this inning, allowing just the one hit and the two out double. Long look in, shakes off a sign from Ronnie Allen Jr. Ronnie Allen Jr., this is just his second appearance in the All's home ballpark. The Cincinnati Country Day alum during his high school days. 2-2 pitch. This one hit hard down the right field line. That one, fair ball. Gets into the corner, a late call by Mike Victor. That's going to go as an RBI single in the Boomers ahead here early. That one was a late job by getting the head around by Victor and immediately out of the dugout is Brian White. That is a big call. Looks like it was, was right along the line. Victor whipped his head around. Was That's his call to make. Can't really appeal down to anybody else. He ruled it fair. And an RBI single for Braxton Davidson. Davidson's second RBI of this series. That's a big call. And you're right. I mean, you can't appeal to anybody. Can't go to video. That's the umpire's call, and it basically has to stand. That's a big call. I mean, that's really, really close. You would need a camera. You would need replay to determine that. But not here in this league, not here tonight, and it's one nothing Schomburg. Can't really fault Villalobos on that one. That ball was hit hard, but... He's looked so good, so far so good, I should say, filling up the strike zone, but tough luck gives up a run. That one missed high. Hardy, a ball. Flynn Hardy, the right fielder today. Getting his fourth start in this series, a 364 batting average. Yet to have an RBI, but five total bases for him. That one low and in. Nice stop by Ronnie Allen Jr. It's 2-0. Lots of two out runs, especially in game one of this series for Schaumburg. Helped them win that ball game five to one. Also helped by a slew of Florence errors so far. Yellow yeah, Moset looks at the runner, the 2-0 pitch. Misses low, three and Now here's where you can't let a call like that or, or two out runs become multiple two out runs in crooked numbers especially with walking guys in the middle of the order. The bottom of the order showed for Schomburg yesterday, scoring four runs in the second, that it's not too shabby either. 3-0 pitch. This one given a ride deep to left field, and that ball is gone. It is 3-0. Things can happen quickly. We learned that last night. Trending in that same direction in this first inning. Three runs on three hits, all coming with two outs. This was literally the worst possible scenario for manager Brian White and the Alls. And we talked about Villalobos having a quick hook, really any sort of situation, any sort of threat, you're getting him out of there. But this is the first inning. I mean, you can talk all you want about that call, but at the same time, Villalobos yeah. has allowed two hard-hit doubles, fell behind to Davidson, put him in a hitter's count, and then fell behind to Hardy, put him in a hitter's count. First pitch to Matt Botcher in there for his strike. Matt Botcher started his first game yesterday. This one right back up the box into center field for a base hit, four base hits with two outs, and now Alex Wagner gonna start to get loose in that bullpen. Chad Rhodes out to the mound. All hands on deck, but three run deficit this early, that's tough to go to the bullpen, not even one inning into it. Not that they're gonna do that now, but you're getting them loose. I mean, at this point, you have to throw the kitchen sink at him, right? Try to keep him in it. Hope the offense scores, but mention it at the start of the broadcast in the pregame show. You know, this offense has been stagnant all series, and it sounds like it's beating a dead horse at this point, but 
three games in, some of your big bats aren't producing the way that the Alls have expected them to produce, so as the Alls have known them to produce. And you're down 3 nothing. In two of the three games this series, they haven't scored three runs. And in the other game, they scored four. So this is a tough deficit to overcome unless the Alls really snap out of their offensive funk, which they're certainly capable of. Hitting coach Drew Martinez was encouraged last night. They were hitting balls right at guys. They hit some very hard outs. He felt that they got robbed a little bit, so the offense may be at a turning point. But down 3 nothing, this is not a good scenario. First pitch to Angelo Gums, who hit some balls hard yesterday. Watches his strength. But uh, Villalobos, he gave up 10 home runs and 35 doubles on the regular season. Add one to each category and a pair of singles. Runner on first base, that's Matt Botcher. All of this with two outs, four runners reaching, three of them scoring, including a home run. Up and away for a ball, one and one. This is more than just a tough test. This is your season on the line. You're already down three. Offense going to have to put some runners on the board. This one hit hard to center. In now freezing is Connor Crane. That's going to end the inning. Damage at three. Four runners reach on base hits with two outs. We have the bottom of the first inning. Boomer's already up. Three nothing. And the alls yet to come to the plate. The Alls are chasing three here in the bottom of the first inning of game four, the 2021 Frontier League Division Series. Florence, win or go home mode. This is the lineup written out by Brian White. Jose Brizuela leads it off, he'll designate it hit. Luis Pintor, the shortstop, bat second. Chad Sedio in left field, bats third. Taylor Bryant at third base today, cleaning up. Of course, no Trevor Crayport due to his injury after the collision last night. Harrison DeNicola batting fifth in right field. Andres Rios, second base batting six. Jordan Brower, RBI in every single ball game. In this series, he bats seventh at first base. Ronnie Allen Jr., the catcher, bats eighth. And Connor Crane in center field. All of this against starting pitcher, the lefty for Schaumburg, Andrew Dean. For this season at a 5-10 record and a 4-7-8 earned run average and over 100 innings pitched. Left on left to start the inning. Outside corner for a strike. It's 0-1 on Jose Brizuela. Well, if there's a saving grace for Florence, Dean tied for the Frontier League lead in losses. Not a category you want to be leading the league in. Also allowed 24 doubles this year. This one given a ride to center field straight away to center back. And making a catch on a back pedal is the center fielder, Dawson. That's a pair of hard hit balls in the first inning for Brizuela each yesterday and today, but both of them for outs. Well, something to keep in mind, we talked about it at the beginning, or I should say at the end of yesterday's broadcast. Lawrence has gone down in order one, two, three in each of the first three games this series. They need something early tonight. You know, put a couple base runners on, make Dean work, show some fight. I don't think you can go down one, two, three. You're already down yeah. three runs. You know, if you leave a runner on third, not the ideal situation, but at least force Dean to throw some high-stress pitches. Give your offense a little life, a little mojo. This one hit in the air, deep to right field at the track. The right fielder, Hardy, makes the catch against the wall. I didn't think that ball carried as far as it did. Off the bat, didn't seem to be hit all that hard, but that continued to carry. Pintor got a better piece of it than I thought. Three pitches and two outs for Dean. Something that the Yalls really haven't done is get to the bullpen with regularity. Especially after last night, nine innings by Ryan Middendorf tossed. Outside corner for a strike to Chad Sedia. And when they did get to the bullpen, what happened? Thompson walked two guys, or allowed two guys to reach. Joyce came in, Pintor doubled. Now one pitch to Sedia, and he gets hit by the pitch anyway on for him. He's only been on base twice, both with hit by pitches in this series. Florence gets a two-out base runner. And Taylor Bryant, the cleanup man, comes to the plate. This is a guy that'll work some deep at bats too. Ryan, expect him to see some pitches here. He hits lefties pretty well. He's four for eight this season against left-handed pitching. Limited playing time, but that's to be expected with the time that Bryant has missed this year. It's really been a tough year for Bryant. You feel for him, injury-wise. 
Dean hit 13 batters in the regular season, fires low to Taylor. It's 1 0. He has a deceptive move just on that first pitch. He didn't throw over, but the way his kick comes up, he's going to keep runners close at first base all night. That's a tough move, tough motion, I should say, to read. Dean also gave up 31 extra base hits. Inside corner for a strike, one and one. Brian, a guy that's going to work a lot of counts, especially when he was up in that leadoff spot. The walk rate increased. The on-base percentage for Bryant, 157 points higher than his batting average. Inside, some spin on it. It's one and two. Radar gun here at y'all's ballpark has not registered anything today. Keep you updated as the ball game goes on. One, two count, two outs, runner on first base. Y'all's trying to answer back a three spot in the top of the first. Fouled back, stays alive. This is a much needed at bat from Bryant. Dean got the first two guys out on three pitches, hit Sedio after two. So you work deep into this. Yeah, you fall behind 1-2, but force Dean to at least get to that double-digit pitch mark in this first inning. You mentioned the lack of bullpen usage. Rather short bullpen already for Schomburg, and with the complete game yesterday, they are locked and loaded. 1-2 outside that missed. About three inches outside, even to the count at 2-2. Two and two. And, you know, the guys that follow Taylor Bryan in the lineup are the top three batting averages in this series for Florence. Not in that order, but it's DeNicola at 250, then Rios at 400, and Brower at 333. 2-2 two -two count, two outs, runner on first base, bottom one. This one hit hard, down the right field line, twisting foul, and goes out of play. Just such a good feel for the strike zone. Left the 1-2 just outside, knew it was away. Has fouled off a couple pitches. Let the count get deep. He's not afraid to be behind in the count. Now granted, the numbers haven't been great this year for Bryant, but mentioned the injuries earlier in the at-bat. He hasn't been able to get into a groove this year. But he's been a solid piece for them. Outside, good take. He's worked it full. Sedio will get a head start. Taylor Bryant on the season. Nine extra base hits of his 24 base knocks. Five doubles, four home runs, and limited playing time due to injury. 3-2. On the ground, up the middle, to the right. Gums dives, can't make the play. Throw to first is late. It's rolled a base hit. First hit of the all's ball game, a great at-bat from Taylor Bryant, and it's first and second for Harrison to Nicola. That's a really good at-bat from Bryant. Fell behind, fouled off some pitches, worked it back full. Hard hit up the middle. Gums playing very deep. And that actually allowed him to get to the ball. I'm not sure why he was playing so deep to begin with, but it actually worked out in his favor. If he's playing a bit closer to the infield, that ball gets by him in a hurry, but it actually worked in his favor. He keeps the ball in the infield. An infield single, sure, but Sedio reaches at second and can't go any further after that ball is knocked down. The next pitch, a curveball way outside at 76. Harrison and Nicola, three hits in the series. Two of them doubles, including a double in last night's ninth inning. Jokes up a little bit on the bat. Left on left. Match up here with two outs. And two runners on. Tying run at the plate in the first inning. 1-0. This one hit hard down the right field line. That's fair and for a base hit. Rounding second. Coming home is Chad Sedio stopping at third base. Is Taylor Bryant. An early inning RBI single from Harrison to Nicola. And now the tying runs on base, it's 3-1. That's huge, that is huge. You know, we felt like Florence needed something early in the game after going one, two, three in each of the first innings of this series. And yeah, you, you still have a chance to tie this game, sure, but even if you don't, you've shown some life. You know, the crowd's into it a little bit now. They haven't really been into it all series so far with the, the lopsided result yesterday. You're back in the game now. You've shown some life. You've given your offense some confidence. You've probably given your Niker Lobos and the pitchers a little more confidence. They're not on an island anymore. You know, they know that the offense is going to be with them tonight. 500 on-base percentage for Andres Rios. 400 batting average as well. Watches a ball. 
Four hits for him, two runs scored, including an RBI. In 10 at-bats, he's also walked twice. Runners on the corners, outside corner for a strike, one and one. Jordan Brower awaits on deck, mentioned earlier, he has a run batted in in every game this series. Including a home run last night to get the all's first hit. One one. This one in the air to center field. Running back on it is Dawson. He settles under it and makes the catch. Y'all's answer with one. Again, all of them getting on with two outs. Three consecutive reach. Sedio scores after getting hit by a pitch on a Harrison to Nicola RBI single. We head to the second inning. It's 3 1 Boomers. You're watching the Florence Y'all's Broadcasting Network and Frontier League TV, powered by Vimeo. <laughs> 